I love democracy. I love the Republic. Relevant to our 21st century challenges. Yeah. No, oh, thank you, Karen, and thank you for uh, uh, giving us this opportunity to uh, to engage this morning. Um, <clears throat> I think we have to remember a little bit why and how NATO came into being. NATO exists and existed because the great democracies had uh, just uh, countered communism and fascism, uh, and it remained as a or was an ongoing existence of pushing back against communism. Of, of uh, admiration I actually have for China. Um, because their you know, basic dictatorship is allowing them uh, to actually turn their economy around on a dime and say, we need to go green as fast as we need to start you know, investing in solar. Into deficit in this current climate to, as you say, put more people to work. The commitment needs to be uh, a commitment to grow the economy, and the budget will balance itself. Uh the federal government's absence over generations in recognizing and implementing indigenous rights has resulted in social and economic exclusion, uncertainty, and litigation. When our shared focus should have always been on creating prosperity and opportunity for everyone. And we came forward with a different approach. An approach that said the way to grow a strong economy in the 21st century is by making sure that everyone has a real and fair chance to succeed. That we invest in the middle class and in people working hard to join it. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you. People in Grassy Narrows are suffering from mercury poisoning. You Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much for your donation tonight. I really appreciate the uh, donation to the Liberal Party of Canada. And, and as we know, the Liberal Party is filled with different perspectives and different opinions and we respect them all and our commitment to reconciliation continues to be strong and committed and we will continue to engage. Thank you, sir, for your donation to the Liberal Party of Canada. I really appreciate you being here tonight. Thank you for being here. That is why we are moving forward on reconciliation in a real and tangible way. Thank you, sir. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for highlighting how important reconciliation is. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, on this side of the House, we will always support a free and independent press. Sometimes hear about liberal bias in the media these days, how they're constantly letting off our government, letting our government off the hook for no good reason. Frankly, I think that's insulting. It's clear that they let us off the hook for a very good reason because we paid them $600 million. Let me be clear. There is no place in our country for discrimination driven by fear or misinformation. This is not something Canadians will ever stand for. It was Time Magazine that uncovered the 18-year-old photo from a yearbook at West Point Gray Academy in Vancouver, where Trudeau was teaching when he was 29 years old. Answering a question last night, Trudeau admitted to wearing blackface while in high school while performing Deo. And just this morning, a video purporting to show Trudeau in blackface yet again, when and where unclear, but Canada's Global News reporting, it's him. It is so important that we all understand uh, that it's not only uh, that men can be feminists, it's that men should be feminists as well. And I am proud of that. I had a, a good day that day. I don't remember any uh, negative interactions that day at all. That day was back in August 2000 at a BC festival. Justin Trudeau was 28, years before his political career began. 
The next day, an unsigned editorial appeared in the local newspaper, the Creston Valley Advance. It accused Trudeau of groping and inappropriately handling an unnamed young female reporter. There were no other specifics about the alleged physical contact. The editorial says when Trudeau was asked about the incident, he responded, I'm sorry, if I had known you were reporting for a national paper, I never would have been so forward. Bonjour tout le monde. I want to begin by recognizing that a lot of people have now been stuck at home for a week or more because of COVID-19. If that's starting to take a toll, it's understandable. But we can't afford to stop now. I want to be clear. Social distancing, physical distancing, is the single best way to keep the people around you safe. We've all seen the pictures online of people who seem to think they're invincible. Well, you're not. Enough is enough. Go home and stay home. This is what we all need to be doing. And we're going to make sure this happens, whether by educating people more on the risks or by enforcing the rules, if that's needed. Nothing that could help is off the table. 